Exploring Lethal Company's eight moons has been a terrifying trip, even if it is, in its current state, an early access proof of concept. Developer Zekers' creative little project is hard to overhype thanks to its ability to juggle different tones. What makes it truly amazing, though, is that it has managed to garner and maintain hundreds of thousands of fans while remaining an uncomplicated but masterfully crafted audiovisual experience. Oh! Lethal Company has become so popular that you might forget how simple its core gameplay loop and setup are. You and up to three friends are laborers, space scrap collectors working the only job you know for pay. Rummaging for garbage in long abandoned factories and empty mansions is, at best, a recipe for OSHA violations. The bleak is made bleaker by the faceless tentacle monster that is your boss. It's a straightforward concoction of get stuff and don't die that's stirred together with an oppressive time limit that eventually results in outside terrors coming to eat you and your friends. Items have different weights, so if you collaborate with your coworkers to bring heavier objects back to your ship, you should make enough money before... Y yeah, yeah, Lethal Company is basically just horror Pikmin. Honestly though, I can't think of a better or more fitting compliment. The thing is, is it also kinda doesn't look that great at first glance. I mean, like, look at this alphabet soup-ass instruction manual. What the hell does this even say? You can't deny that the polygonal models, crude animations, and statically charged UI play a part in the comedy of bonking your buddy on the head with a shovel, but I'd argue that these looks offer far more than opportunities to just goof off. The presence of metal structures, fire escapes, barren trees, railroad tracks, blurry posters, and even power lines generate the sense that people used to live here. And now they don't, and you're about to find out why. Its vibes are similar to something like the back rooms, which becomes far more apparent when you actually enter a building. Strolling through these recognizable but unpredictable liminal locations feels like playing a demake version of a game you haven't touched for a few years. It's sort of like you just accidentally stumbled into an industrial version of Skinamarink, only the things that go bump in the night are just a bit more social. There are 19 identifiable entities that spawn on Lethal Company's moons at random. There's the Bracken, a quick and calm predator that stalks its prey with deadly silence before snapping their necks. On the flip side are things like Coilheads, Toy Story boogeymen that won't move a muscle as long as you're watching them. Each is a shadowy figure with a cheap horror flick vibe and one or two simple gimmicks. The Thumper isn't a creatively mangled zombie or a psychopath killer with tragic beginnings. It reminds me more of John Carpenter's Thing, but with less detail. Actually, all of these enemies, visually at least, have that same minimalistic design that the environments do. I don't think I care that much about what the thing chasing me looks like, though. This kind of horror isn't about understanding why a thumper thumps, but the rules that it plays by. It's about what it's going to do when it catches you, and what it means for the mission and for your friends. The only thing more terrifying than seeing what lies in the dark of every unlit hallway is imagining what's there instead, and when each enemy has its own behaviors, all you can do is stay on your toes. That's why it was so important to design each monster intentionally. You know how to react to a coilhead, a bracken, a thumper, an eyeless dog, or, god forbid, a ghost girl because their appearances are a translation of their behavior. Their looks are what they need to be, and nothing more. <laughs> Lethal Company's ability to switch between a lighthearted and deathly serious tone is held up by concentrated visuals and gameplay, but it's the audio that really marries every element together. The role sound plays in horror in any medium can't be understated, but here it's a crucial component for immersion. Speak to your buddies in-game and you'll notice that everyone's voices fit within the environment. Metal hallways and rocky canyons each produce a unique echo effect. Your friends' voice volume dynamically changes depending on their distance from you. Proximity chat is far from revolutionary, but I'm not sure it's been executed in a way that elevates tension and comedy. I love that when a snare flea wraps itself around your teammate's head, their voice will be muffled until they are eventually suffocated to death. My favorite touch is that your audio cuts out for others the instant you die. Lethal Company has a long way to go, but I think Yahtzee said it best. If you do take it seriously, Lethal Company successfully achieves that rare, prize-worthy quality of being able to organically create what feel like classic movie moments. Sup? Simplistic visuals, audio, and gameplay. 
Lethal Company whittles major elements down to their finest qualities and emphasizes them, successfully creating environments that can only be described as theatrical. You're the Marines and Aliens, you're the paranoid group of researchers in The Thing, you're the helpless college kids in The Evil Dead. It's simple, low-budget appeal with a hint of slapstick humor, and who doesn't love a good low-budget horror comedy? Rumor, if you stand still, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah! oh. I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. Robert? Yeah? Okay, you're still alive. Still alive. Co-op comedy can quickly become single-player horror when you watch as your friends are slowly peeled away. Indie games may not always be backed by major publishers, but Lethal Company proves that the right ideas can achieve authentic experiences like this. Zeekers leans on simple gameplay and is right to. While I don't know what Lethal Company 1.0 looks like, there is no doubt in my mind that it will only build upon what makes this version of the game great. It's high praise, but I really think that, with some polishing and extra goodies, Lethal Company could be a classic party game, if you've got the stomach for it. Thank <laughs> you.